The Eel's Foot is a pub where you feel like you are taking a step back in history when you enter. The present building dates back to at least 1642, when it was originally two cottages. A third cottage, now the Darts Room, was added in about 1725. The pub's unusual name possibly derives from Eel's Boot, a type of woven reed basket used in eel fishing. Situated quite near the coast, the hostelry was once a haunt of both smugglers and parties of pursuing dragoons, who also needed rest and refreshment. Good evening everyone. As you can see I'm joined by Mark the Postie. Hello. We're on a little walk and wild camp tonight. We're in the lovely little village of Eastbridge in Suffolk, right near the coast. It's a car coming. And as you've just seen, we've left the Eels Foot Inn, where they very kindly let us park Mark's car overnight and we bought a drink each as well. So we're doing a little five mile circular walk from the Pocket Pub Walks book of Suffolk by Cyril Francis. And five mile walk and yeah, we're gonna be seeing a little bit of the, the Suffolk coast. The plan is we're gonna try and wild camp on the beach and we sort of set ourselves a little target just to use bivvies tonight. Yes. So we've left the tents in the car. Hopefully no one breaks in. I've got my helm <laughs> one in there. <laughs> and yeah. So I've got well I've got my Rab Ridge Raider Hoop bivvy. I've also got my Rab Survival Zone bivvy as well. You've got your OEX Bush Pro bivvy, yeah? Yep. Excellent. And yeah, we're gonna see if we can get away with that. The weather is really nice, so we should be all right. Yeah. Um, I've got loads of food to cook up, which we'll show you later on. We've got some ciders, of course, and we're gonna get a shift on. I think the turning might be down here. So enough talking, let's get walking. If you like combining bird watching with walking, this is the walk for you. The varied route covers a habitat of coastal dunes, woodland, and marshland. The Suffolk Heritage Coast has been designated as being one of outstanding natural beauty, unspoiled and little changed over the centuries. Starting from the Eelsfoot car park, a road and long track take us to Kenton Hills where we continue along a popular route on permissive paths through Goose Hill Woodlands planted by the Forestry Commission in 1958. An area known as Sizewell Belts is a complex system of grazing marshes interspersed with ditches and narrow tree belts and is rich in wildlife. The walk continues through the dunes towards Minsmere with the well-known RSPB reserve a short distance away. Welcome back everyone. It's about 8pm now. We've made it out onto the beach just north of Sizewell Nuclear Power Station. Tide's coming in a little bit. So we're out on the beach and we're gonna start looking for places to camp. We're meant to be heading north anyway, which we're doing towards Minsmere Sluice. So 
we'll either try and look for somewhere on the beach away from the, the high tide mark of course or we'll look for somewhere in like the dunes just sort of just off of the beach either way it's a pretty brilliant location to a wild camp and as Suffolk's known as the Sunshine Coast of course east is that way we're going to be getting a sunrise coming out of the sea in the morning brilliant anyways we'll probably bring you back once we've found somewhere to set up and we'll get the bivvies all set up chat you soon okay we're all set up on the beach here and Mark's sort of tucked amongst the, the sea grass here with his OEX Bush Pro bivvy and then I've got my Rav Ridge Raider hoop bivvy now get in the comments everyone is that cheating? is that still a bivvy or is that a shit tent? because <laughs> Mark's annoyed that I'm not using the Rav Survival Zone we agreed we went back on it. faceless bivvies but it's still a bivvy I know it's got a zip and a door on it anyway let me know what you think I think it's still a bivvy it's just a luxurious bivvy anyway, anyway we've got my Helm 1 footprint down as a as like a sit mat because I forgot to bring some Tyvek and stuff so we're using that making do we've each bought a load of sand stakes along we're using all of them so just sort of peg everything down and then I've got the OEX Takana uh, jet boil style stove again I've also got the Trangia alcohol stove as my backup so cider tonight Hawks Urban Orchard apple cider and Alska Nordic berries now for dinner doing something a little bit different I am cooking Mark dinner as well, he forgets this because <laughs> he's only got a pot noodle, he left his chicken and stuff at home I think so I've got this uh, four cheese tortellini pasta whole box of it and two of these uh, stirring pasta sun dried tomato sauces so we'll have half the pasta each and a tub of sauce each I bought him a cider as well um, what side has you got, so I've got the one you gave me on the last trip, which I didn't get a chance to drink, and I've got the one you gave me today. Oh, they're both from me then? Yep. Right, I can have the hoop bivvy then. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's the deal, mate. Anyway. No, it's fine, honestly. I've got a load more food there. I always bring plenty of food, because you just never know. I'll probably get hungry later on again. And there's breakfast in there. I've got everything self-contained in the bivvy. Mark's got a bin bag for stuff. It works, it all works, doesn't it? Anyways, and then, oh, if I turn around, the beach is out there and the sea's out there. And we're sort of sheltered from the wind a bit by the seagrass on three sides, really. And we should get a really nice sunrise coming up somewhere over here in the morning. It's going to be a good camp, this one. I think it's time, Mark, to crack a cider open. Oh, yes. It's, uh, Which one? Well, I'm going to start with I'm going to start with Hawks first. I'm going to go with flat tire. Okay then. Here we go. Let's crack them open. To a good camp. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Cheers, everyone. Okay, it's gone 10 p.m. I think it's probably nearly half 10 now. I think. And. We've had a bit of dinner. We had a bit of a nightmare with that, really. The pasta that I was going to make turned out it was actually mouldy. So we had to bin that. Whole lot was ruined. And then I had a Mexican tuna and pasta ration pack meal. And I thought, well, I'll try it. As you probably remember, I'm not a fan of tuna. But I thought Mexican tuna with pasta might be all right. Nope. I took like two mouthfuls of it and I thought I was going to throw up in my mouth so I gave that to Mark, he was very happy because I say I only had a pot noodle I had a bit of his slow cooked pot noodle 
with his mystery sauce in it, which was sticky rib, we think. Could have been anything for all we know, but that was quite tasty. But I think by then I'd lost my appetite. I've had some snack bars and uh, some army cheese spread and biscuits. Uh, a hot chocolate and a coffee, and I'm just making up one more hot chocolate. I'm probably just going to have the one cider tonight, the Hulk cider. It is pretty cold out here. We've got uh, like all our layers on and stuff. And even Mark's feeling the cold now. He is wearing shorts though. I'm wearing a jumper and a hoodie and a t-shirt. Yeah, that's that a lot for you it. though, isn't it? It is, yes. But the, the shorts thing, see Mark's a postman, so hence the Royal Mail trainers. So he doesn't feel the cold. You know, as you probably know, postmen wear shorts all year round. But even Mark's feeling the cold, so it must be a bit nippy. It is a bit nippy. But we'll be warm in the bivvies though. I can't wait. I'm just going to get this hot chocolate made, get in the bivvies. Sorry we've not done a lot of filming tonight. That's all of our rubbish there. The stoves, though, have worked really well. So Mark's used his solid fuel stove with my windshield. I've used the Takana. It's, it's been all good. Got a boil on. There we go. The tide's gone out as well. So anyway, apologies if I'm shouting. I think... I don't know if there's a breeze or the waves whether you can hear me over that but yeah so next time you'll see me is in that bivvy with that hot chocolate I cannot wait it's gonna to be toasty in there okay I'm inside the hoop bivvy now I've had my hot chocolate got enough space in here to read a book check the map for tomorrow's uh, rest of tomorrow's walk and I've just got the, the mesh door up and the storm door down so I've been chatting to Mark through that got just a little light hanging up like a little key ring light and then the head torch, the head torch is flickering because the battery's low on it but I've got another head torch actually with full battery but I thought we might as well use this up so yeah anyways we're going to aim to get up for around 6am hopefully catch a really good sunrise we'll probably go back to sleep for a little bit and then get up around 7.30 aim to be out of here and walking by 9am that would be ideal the shelters aren't going to take long to take down it's just bivvies of course uh, it's a lot warmer in here it's really nice comfy a little bit of a slope down towards the sea but that's alright it's not too bad we're not going to roll in the sea because we're miles away from it. The bivvy is actually pegged out with sand stakes as well. So, yeah, we're going to get some sleep now. So, unless anything of interest happens overnight, I'll chat to you in the morning. Say so, goodnight, Mark. Goodnight. Night. Night. morning everyone it's about 6 30 a.m. and I just want to say I slept brilliantly I was so warm and comfy in this hoop bivvy I forgot how much I love it now we did get some rain last night it was on and off no issues in here at all no condensation I did go belt and bridges and I also had the Rab Survival Zone bivvy over my down bag just in case I got any condensation in it because I did put the storm door up about halfway and I had the mesh door zipped all the way up of course so tiny bit more condensation than normal but not a lot like the bathtub floor area and the base of the bivvy is bone dry just a dampness but it's not dripping condensation Mark, on the other hand, though, was in a normal faceless bivvy. And uh, 
Mark will tell you. Go on, Mark. Explain your your night and situation with oh, the. We had rain. Yep. I had a very good sleeping bag that kept me warm. By condensation inside the bivy bag. Yeah. So the outside of the sleeping bag is very, very wet, but the inside is completely dry of the sleeping bag. I had the bivy bag done up really small, which probably didn't help, but because it was raining, I didn't want to get wet inside. Yeah. So I was on and off sleep all night, really. But listening to the sea going in there was beautiful. It's very relaxing, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Really nice, these coastal ones. So, on evaluation of that, would you like a hoot bivy? Yes. Just go with like an army hoot bivy to begin with. Cheaper. No, uh, just don't want heaviness really. Yeah, that's the only problem. They are a bit heavy, aren't they? The old army hoot bivvies, but still, yeah. I'm dry in here just to reiterate. <laughs> I feel like such an arsehole. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm so glad I chose the hoop video for the Rebel Survival Zone. I'd have been straight in this, honestly, anyway. I'm not ashamed of admitting that. Right, anyways, I'm going to go back to sleep for a bit because we caught a little bit of the sunrise, but. Well, Mark was having a shit at the time, the sun came up, and I was just laying in here thinking, oh, we're not going to get a sunrise because it's cloudy, and a little gap in the clouds between the sea and the clouds, and it just went, whoop, and that was it. And I was like, oh, shit, we've missed that. Just got, like, the last few seconds of it. Anyway, chat to you in a bit. I'm going back to sleep. doing some breakfast, got a green tea, uh, some natural muesli with milk and I'm going to add some like cranberries, raisins, sultanas, red currants, that sort of stuff to it. Maybe a bit of a uh, table syrup as well, make it a bit more palatable. I've had a protein bar, uh, got an energy gel, an energy drink powder so I'm going to make all that up. There's a uh, a lot of dog walkers out now, we've seen quite a few, they don't seem too bothered though by us. There's the, the nuclear power station size well uh, reactors A and B, the, the big white golf ball, that's noticeable for miles around, that's a well known landmark that. Just zoom in, there you go. I've walked around here before and I usually wild camp a lot further down between Sizewell and Thought Ness. Down that way towards like Sizewell Hall, but say this walk takes us north a bit and 
This is actually a really nice section of coastline this. You've got the dunes there as well where you could pitch up in or you've got the beach. And it's still pretty quiet along this bit. I forgot about this. South Wold's over in the distance. We can see the, the lighthouse working as the light swings round. So that was, yeah, used to be my usual spot down that way. If I'd come up here for an easy camp. But I think I'm going to change and start using this area a couple more times. It's really good. Anyways, let's get eating some breakfast. Mark's already packed away. He's been drying out all of his bivvy and stuff like that. I'm going to get mine dried out, packed away. And then we'll get walking. Not far left to go now to get back to the Eels Foot In pub where Mark's car is. Okay, it's 9am, we're all packed up. There's Mark's spot, nice and tidy. And there's my little spot, nice and tidy. Leave no trace. There's our bag of rubbish. We're gonna hold that in the sea and walk off. Let the power station deal with it. No, I'm only joking, we're taking it with us, of course. We're not arseholes believe it or not, are we? No, we're not. <laughs> You're right. I'm taking it. <laughs> anyway, so, we've got to walk that way, and then hang a left. Uh, we'll take you past the remains of the old chapel that's got a World War II pillbox built into it. And, yeah, heading back inland towards the Eelsford Eastbridge, somewhere over there. Do you want to do the honours, Mark? Enough talking. Let's get walking. Leyston Abbey was founded in 1182, but in 1363, with flooding becoming more frequent, the abbey was dismantled, leaving only the chapel. The stone was used to build a new abbey, two miles inland, near Eastbridge. During World War II, in a rouse to camouflage defences from aerial observation, a pillbox was constructed within the ruin.
turn to Eastbridge takes you inland beside a drainage channel and over marshland before you arrive back at the Eel's Foot. And there we go, we've arrived back in Eastbridge at the Eel's Foot Inn, the car's in the car park. We'll see you there. Good little walk that. We're back at Mark's car, behind the Eel's Foot Inn here. And that's the end of this video, the end of the walk. It's been a really good little camp that, really nice walk, I'd happily do that one again. Had a really good mixture of beach and dunes, pine forests, woodlands, water meadows, nature reserves. There was the chapel ruins with a pillbox thrown in as well. Really good. We've had a good time. It's been wonderful. It's been good fun, isn't it? Really enjoyed best myself. Mate. It was the best camp yet. Really? Yes, because I, I enjoyed the walk with it as well. It was incorporated. Excellent, yeah. yeah. It's always good, I think, mixing the two together, really, rather than just doing one or the other. It's, it's good to sort of... It feels more like an adventure, yeah. in a way. A oh. micro-adventure, even. Yeah. Anyways, I want to say a big thank you to Mark for joining me. It's been a pleasure. It's always a pleasure, never a chore. <laughs> and also, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And I hope you look forward to seeing more of these types of videos, because that's what I plan on doing for a little while. So until next time, take care of yourselves, look after each other, stay safe, and get out there, see the world. Cheers everyone, see you soon. Bye. Bye.